Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is day number one back home after the Gulf Coast Homesteaders Meetup, and we're just gonna go do a little bit of chores, and we're gonna do a walk around because things have changed dramatically since I was here last and since I've last shown you guys around. Later on, I'm, I gotta run to town, so I'm gonna be able to pick up some a couple little groceries, and I'm gonna start working on something pretty awesome. It is crazy gorgeous beautiful everywhere you go right now i mean i don't know if you can see the beauty of this okay so right before this is terrible lighting in every direction, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so you can see here, we definitely got the tomatoes just in time. These things were dead. They were pretty much dead the day after I got them because it got down to 26 degrees. And then the following night it got down to 19 and that sealed everything's fate. <laughs> it was already done, but like it really looked done at that point. So you can see, we just left all of these things here for now. This used to be all tomatoes and everything is completely dead. All the peppers, even the potatoes. I don't even think my husband harvested potatoes. I'm going to have to go and remind him because I think it might be too late. <laughs> I'm not sure. My little boo missed me. Do you miss me? Do you miss me? Yeah, you're a sweetie pie. They're getting so big, I can't even believe it. They've been eating, um, they've been eating the, the offal from the chickens that we don't want. Like the intestines and stuff like that. They are fat and happy. They are enjoying it. We just froze it up in Ziploc bags and we just, Robert's been, that's been their cat food for a while. You can see all of our trees have fallen, all of their leaves. I missed that. It went from green to yellow and empty very quickly while I was gone. So I didn't get to see the beauty of the yellow tree. I just realized that my aloe plant might be dead. I need to bring that guy inside. All right, let's put this up by the door so I remember. Hey, it's starting to sprout little, what, little aloes. One of the things on my list to do here probably this week is cleaning that guy out because I really don't want to go in there right now. <laughs> So, um, certainly not when I'm forced to in a, in, a, um, in a sudden emergency have to go in there. It's not disgusting, but like, you know, there's no water in there, there's no food in there, it hasn't been vacuumed since the ants were killed. You know, it could use a lady's touch. So we're gonna go in there, we're gonna, we're going to, we're gonna touch up the storm shelter and just make it look nice, make it look like a place you wanna spend a couple hours in, you know what I'm saying? And then next, our other regular garden, all of these leaves are going to get raked up. That is going to be my son's next job for his, for working off his rent. It's going to be all raked up into a nice little pile and we're just going to let it compost for the rest of the season. What's the best way that you guys have to cook, to compost leaves? Do I just put it in a pile and set it and forget it? Do I need to add a bunch of nitrogen to it? How can I get that stuff ready to go by early spring naturally you can definitely tell see this is what it looked like I didn't actually show you guys because I was in a hurry and I was leaving but this is what it looked like after the 19 degrees like it was just dead it was all gone there was no hope for it ever it just instantly just killed everything and the cabbages unfortunately the um, the Harlequin bugs zapped them I was they weren't even worth weren't even worth it was not even worth trying and I was planning on feeding the heads to the chickens so they kill off the harlequin bugs so we'll probably end up doing that here later today get my own sort of revenge you know what I'm saying all the cucumbers I mean literally like everything just died instantly it was crazy I didn't get to harvest any of my beans well I got to harvest some of them but all the ones I forgot about them when the har frost came I was so focused on the tomatoes that I did not even think to harvest the beans. <laughs> in case you're wondering, the uh, something was digging in here too, dang it. Uh, but when soybeans 
are ready to go, they just drop their seed everywhere. So they open, they all opened. Oh, there's a couple that have beans inside. That's what, I didn't notice that before. But you can see we're just gonna. This is gonna be the forever the home of the soybeans. It's just where it's gonna be. Our tunnel over here. None none of the fruit actually made it uh, to fruition. You can see they all just look like the little decorative um, ones that you get in the store. <laughs> Nothing actually made it, unfortunately, but it still looks cool. And it's still something that I know that I will be able to expand upon next year. I think next year I'm actually going to build another one. Uh, just exactly the same right there. Maybe even go up there a little bit. Is this goldenrod? The last two events that I went to, I did, I did, I did some digging and some looking at the herbal events that they were having. Both of them heavily referenced something called goldenrod. I never even knew what it was before, but now I do. And I came home to find this. <laughs> Didn't even know this existed in my yard. So we're gonna be harvesting some of these. We're gonna be making some tinctures, some salves, all the things that you're supposed to make with this stuff. We're gonna be making with it because I didn't even know it was here. I didn't even know, I had to just do the picture of this app and I was like, I bet that's goldenrod. Sure enough, goldenrod. So I'm super pumped and it looks like it's all the way down. And we got mullein. There's another huge mullein right over there. Look how tall it is. It's it's tall. It's like chin high on me. This beautiful specimen covered in those stupid things. Chicken food. So, anyways, we got two tinctures and things that we're gonna be making. I've returned from this expo very, very inspired. So is this kit. Good grief, I'm never gonna get a moment. Um, but I have come back from this expo incredibly inspired to, I don't know what the right term would be, but to basically just kind of double down on what um, what I was planning on doing before I started doing all this food delivery nonsense. So <laughs> I do have to do it for about two or three more weeks. And then after that, I'm gonna just not do it for a little while. And I'm really gonna focus, I'm gonna hone in, get back to making hopefully seven to eight videos a week, but definitely five very good quality videos. I'm gonna get back to my vlogging, which I know that you guys really love. I just got kind of, I got sidetracked. <laughs> so we're gonna get back to doing that. I'm also gonna kind of bring you along for my, my process of just learning how to make tinctures, learning how to make salves. We're gonna be doing a ton of ferment projects. Ow! I'm just gonna bring you along for the journey of learning how to do all that kind of stuff so that we, and so that we can make all of that stuff in time to be able to start selling at the farmer's market in, in the spring. So I'm really excited about that. I have some really, really unique ideas of some things that I can make and sell. This cat is so extra right now. There's also some really exciting stuff that is also coming up down the pike, but there's, there's just a couple things that are in the works that I think you guys are gonna be really stoked about, and I know I'm really stoked about, and I'm ready to really just go hard. I'm, I'm so excited for everything, for all the opportunities and the possibilities. Just everything that's, that's happened recently is just really, it's hard, it's hard to describe but like I just have this new ray of hope and this new fervor for the fermented homestead. Not that I lost it by any stretch, but like I have I have a, a new new opportunities that have really lightened things up for me and to the point that I am able to recenter my focus. And I'm very happy, I'm very indescribably thankful and sorry, I know that sounds weird, but I'm gonna cry. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not cry. So I'm gonna go ahead and um I was really hoping to be able to show you guys uh, the eggs, but they've already laid four eggs so far. Uh, they started the first day, actually, of the Gulf Coast Homesteaders Meetup. They laid three. Ooh, looks like he is getting ready to do his thing, whether she wants to or not. That's the thing about chickens that you have to understand. If you're new to chickens, consent is not a thing. <laughs> Robert sent me pictures of three of them, and then he, they laid another one yesterday. I was hoping to be able to find one inside, but uh, nothing yet. So I'm sure there will be later today. If there is, I will, I will show you. And they're all white eggs, so they're either from these little black and white dot ones or from the leghorns. 
this cat miss me so much. He's so cute. Ah! He's just so cute. While I was gone, there we go. While I was gone, Robert and Malachi were taking care of a few things around the house. Obviously, they took care of the chickens while I was gone. But they also, Robert got the whole garden area cleaned up. Uh, not garden area, garden tool area. It was just, everything was just thrown over there. So he got that cleaned up and then they, they got the electric netting ran for the ducks. So the plan is once the chickens really know where home is, where to lay their eggs, we're gonna free range the chickens. And then, but the ducks, maybe eventually they'll be free range, but for now we're gonna let them out in this fence just to make sure that we can get them to come back. We do have a pond over there that we don't, we're not ready to loose them in yet. He won't leave me alone. He just loves me. He's just so sweet. So they got that all strung up and we're gonna let them out here as soon as we make sure that it is a nice secure fence. There's a couple areas that need to be kind of reinforced, pulled back with poles and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm excited for that, but in the meantime, that's pretty much it that all I have to do this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to go inside and uh, get ready, got to run to town. I was just looking around and I, I had a feeling that he would do it, but Robert saved the eggs for me. Time to release the ducks. All right, so I don't know if you could see but how difficult that was to actually get these guys to come out But Robert had to go inside there and each one he had to take out. They did not want to come out no matter what But now they're good. We closed it up and um, We closed up the doors so they can't go back inside. We're getting ready to head town Anyways, I told you that earlier. We're just gonna pick them up a nice big pool Nothing fancy, but something that's bigger because they need more Especially because there's gonna be khaki camels in there at some point, too. <laughs> <laughs> 